hey you all hey family my new man family you all are blessed i'm glad to be back um on this word i tried going live for those of you that were live with me uh before and we had network issues so i chose to come and record this and premiere this um yeah so i want to just get right into the word i hope you all are doing great i'm glad um that you're able to uh get this word so i'm going to just go ahead and pray let's pray and then let's welcome the holy spirit um that he will um release this word the way that it that it needs to go out to whom it needs to go to in jesus mighty name heavenly father we give you all the praise we give you all the glory we ask the oh lord even right now that lord for those listening lord to this word for those watching right now i pray lord god that you would release this word through me the way that you want it to go out to them and let this word bless them heavenly father in the name of jesus christ of nazareth and for those O oh lord who are trusting and believing you for restoration of their marriage but i pray that you will bring about O oh lord a mighty and great supernatural turn around the lord and do what they never ever expected what they never ever taught O oh lord in their marital lives heavenly father oh god may this word be a blessing to each and every one that listens today in Jesus mighty name take all the glory father amen and amen so I put in the title God told me to leave my marriage and uh, what happens next will shock you uh, simply because in as much as I want to release this word about what the Lord told me uh, concerning marriage restoration recently I think it was uh, 27 yeah 27 of uh, May this year I also want to um, give out my own testimony again because many people haven't heard about my own testimony. Hallelujah. So the Lord did tell me to leave my marriage in 2018. Father God told me to leave my marriage in 2018. Um, many of you know this already, but some of you don't. But God didn't just tell me to leave my marriage in 2018 for nothing, right? The Lord told me, leave it alone. He was referring to my marriage. and. He even spoke through other mediums and pastors as well that were pastoring me at the time. And and all I kept on hearing all of that period was, you know, uh, leave it alone. Things that are not working, leave it alone. And, and the Lord even gave me those three words inside of my sleep as well. To leave the marriage alone. And I had to obey because myself and my husband back then, we were having a lot of uh, challenges, a lot of uh, you know, our spiritual challenges, physical challenges, financial challenges, all kinds of challenges, fam family challenges. And I mean, I have said this before a few times, we didn't really, uh, I mean, we, we weren't really deep in the things of God back then. We weren't into the things of God back then. And I had no relationship with God and, and neither did he. So the Lord wanted to set things right. So that's why he caused there to be, um, I would call this a shaking, right? He caused there to be a shaking in our marriage. And because of the shaking that came about in the marriage and um, one's obedience to the voice and the leading, <coughs> excuse me, you all, I put chest, a cup, cold, money, nose, only because I exposed myself to the cold. I did not keep warm, you all. So I am living the consequences right now. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I am restored. So there was a shaking. So I had to obey the Lord. And I'm going to make you understand the essence or the importance of obedience when it comes to marriage restoration. Because the Lord brought this back to me yesterday, 27 May. Now the Lord spoke to me yesterday, 27 May, I heard the word restoration. And then the Lord made me understand that he, was, that, uh, he is um, going to be restoring so many marriages in this year, 2022, in this year, 5782 on the Hebrew calendar. The Lord made me understand that this is the year where he's going to be restoring so many marriages. And I know there's quite a few of you women of God, men of God that can, um, you know, confirm, uh, you know, this word as well, you know, that the Lord for, for some of you has already begun to um, work on your marriages by working on your heart first and also working on your spouse's heart first, because that's, that's, that's the only way that, that, that true divine restoration can 
come into manifestation is when you know um you allow the lord through his holy spirit to work <coughs> to work on your heart excuse me to work on your mind to work on your soul to work on your spirit hallelujah for two to become truly one you must have a relationship with the lord first you must become one with the lord first you must become one with the lord first and then when the lord brings in uh, you know um your uh, spouse to come into being one with you everything is already uh cemented everything is already sealed everything is already perfected with one of you first and, and the lord will you know um mostly do this with the women first and work on us first and then bring our spouse into it so that when you go in to join yourself with your kingdom spouse everything can begin to fall into place everything can begin to make sense everything can begin to work right again everything can can uh, begin to feel right again everything can begin to go in the direction that it needs to in that godly direction your destinies can begin to spring up what god created you what god made you for can begin to manifest again hallelujah Everything shall begin to blossom and flourish and grow and thrive. Everything becomes beautiful because you chose to join yourself with the Lord first. And then you come into being joined with your spouse. And when the two of you now come to being one in Christ, that one Christ now envelops both of you and perfects your union until the end until his return i hope that makes sense god doesn't want brokenness but sometimes father god has to allow brokenness because for, for uh, many of us we need to experience brokenness for us to come to uh, have an awakening that will set us in the right trajectory of our future of our destinies hallelujah praise god amen God wants to make our path straight. God wants to make your path straight. God wants to make your way straight. God is God doesn't want you to to you know um you know walk on crooked paths or you know live a crooked kind of life or trying to patch things here and patch things there you know or have a marriage that just you know isn't flowing with milk and honey because that marriage is your land and and God wants to give you a land that flows with milk and honey like his word says <coughs> excuse me hallelujah so restoration is upon you child of God restoration is upon you God doesn't want you to think that you know because he's led you to live this marriage if you know he has led you to live your marriage and he's promised you restoration he, he doesn't want you to you know feel as though that he's not going to restore you or maybe you left your marriage because things weren't working and you chose to leave your marriage the Lord will restore you if it is his will for you to be with that person and continue you know on that path of life with that person he will 100% restore you especially if your destinies are interconnected hallelujah especially if your purposes are interconnected hallelujah praise God you see God doesn't do much making or do restoration the way the world does restoration amen many of us we just want to you know um, look at you know compare between or oh, what I like is what he likes and what he likes is what I like and and all of that and uh, he's good in bed and this and that but God doesn't God doesn't go that way God doesn't do things like that even when it comes to marriage restoration it is deeper than that it's deeper than just going to get counseling or sit down with a with, uh, uh, um, with an expert in, 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 in our relationship and have a convo about how you know to to uh, move forward and, and then they say oh just try and listen to her more or try and spend time more with her no those things are good but if the foundation God's word says if the foundation if the foundation is not right if the foundation is faulty what can the righteous do hallelujah if the foundation is faulty <coughs> excuse me what can the righteous do foundation is key foundation is very very important when it comes to marriages hallelujah because marriages are like um mar mar uh, uh, marriages are uh uh institutions right it, it is an institution like it like like any other institution it's a building okay a, a marriage is like a building 
excuse me praise the lord a marriage is like a building amen and god wants that foundation of that marriage to be set right to be solid to be built upon truth to be built upon not just any truth of how the world thinks think you know uh things should go but he wants your marriage that building to be built upon the truth of his word hallelujah to be built upon the truth of his word and god's word is spirit and it is life and when we begin to build our marriage or allow the lord to you to you know come in and uh, begin to restore our marriages based on the truth of his word we are allowing his holy spirit because it's what the spirit we are allowing his holy spirit to begin to uh perfect polish cleanse purify sanctify everything about that marriage because the holy spirit is the one that you know put the scriptures together so when we look into the word of god of how marriage should be godly marriages should be of how your marriages are going to be restored as well and how god wants to give you double for all that you've lost and all of that you come to have a renewed thinking you come to have a renewed thinking i'm gonna make sure i keep warm next time you come to have a renewed thinking of how your marriage should be of, of how god wants it to be for his glory hallelujah praise the lord so I want to read a few scriptures uh, to give you more enlightenment and understanding. So when the Lord told me to leave my marriage uh, in 2018, I had no idea what was going on to me. I just thought, you know what, this marriage is dead, it's gone. And I'm hearing the voice of what I believe is the Holy Spirit because then I wasn't working with the Lord, you know, saying, leave it alone, leave it alone. And I obeyed and I moved forward and I found myself falling in love with Jesus and I, and you know getting married to him being one with him and everything and uh, a couple of years passed by i think about two and a half years or so and boom before i knew it the lord came you know um spoke to me and and gave me all the signs that he was restoring my marriage next thing i know i'm talking with my ex i haven't spoken to in over two years and he's calling me and he's texting and all of that stuff and, and, and then the lord began to you know reveal the vision you know about you know our marriage restoration about the ministry in Montgomery Church and today I am gloriously remarried uh, restored to my husband minister team hallelujah praise the Lord amen so I just want to put that out there just just to encourage somebody that you know you know may may be going through um, a rocky time in your marriage and, and, and you feel like you are you are uh, going going to be separated and, and you're wondering even if we get separated, am I going to be restored back to this person? Or you're already, you know, divorced or separated and people are making you feel like your life is over. But let me tell you something, your life is not over. God himself, if it is his will for you to be restored back to that person, or he's given you a word of promise saying that he will restore you, you better take that word. You better take that word. For some of you, he may not even tell you. And he'll just spring up on you like that new thing, like he says in Isaiah, you all 43. Amen. Behold, I do a new thing. One thing that was so amazing was that same period in that year when the Lord was beginning to restore myself and my husband back together was he gave me a scripture for my season. Like, like the Lord literally gave me a scripture for my season then. And that scripture for my season then was Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I do a new thing. Can you not see it? See, it springs forth forget the former things right so the lord will, will you know give you a scripture for your season as well to help you get through that season and to encourage you and to you know bring understanding to you or you know enlightenment your way about what he's doing now or what he wants to do and that's something that is that is so amazing about the lord ask the lord father god what is the scripture for my season ask a few times <coughs> excuse me y'all and pause and wait upon the lord and he will give you that scriptural confirmation of the season that you're in and what he's doing in your life in joel 2 25 to 32 it speaks of restoration right so it says and i will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten the kanka worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which i sent among you hallelujah like i said the lord will allow some certain things right to come into your marriage just to shake things up and 
get your attention through that so that you can begin to do the work that is needed in that marriage that both of you cannot see as couples excuse me verse 26 says and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied now god is speaking about you know having restored you there, there's so much sweetness and so much juice and so much honey and so much life and so much goodness and so much joy when when a father god brings in your restoration of your marriage so it's not for you to faint in the hour of your separation or in the hour of one person departing you know, or in the hour of you know your divorce or whatever it is that you know has happened or is currently happening god is so mighty and so able to restore you and make things even much more sweeter than they were amen praise the lord hallelujah he says and praise the name of the lord your god that have dealt wordlessly with you <coughs> excuse me and my people shall never be ashamed hallelujah amen 47 says and you shall know that i am in the midst of israel and that i am the lord your god and none else hallelujah shall and none else and my people shall never be ashamed my people shall never be ashamed hallelujah the way god wants to restore you child of god he's going to do it in a way that everything that brought shame to you before because of your separation or your divorce every pain everything you lost because of you know that marriage being broken into to father god is going to make sure that this time when he restores you and rejoins you back to your spouse there will be not a single shame in choice because let me tell you when god does restoration he does restoration he doesn't just restore your marriage or your union back to that spouse he restores your glory he restores your honor he restores everything about you <coughs> every pain you went through he restores your joy come on now somebody he restores that hallelujah hallelujah by faith i want you to declare over yourself father god i thank you for my kingdom marriage father god i thank you for my marriage restoration i thank you that you are the god that does amazingly restoration i thank you that you are the god that does a restoration divine restoration in such, in, in such an incredible way thank you jesus <coughs> hallelujah job 42 verse 10 to 17 i wouldn't read everything but i'm i'll leave all the scriptures in the bar for you to go and have a look and please have a look at them spend time on them and pray as you meditate on them job 42 we all know about the story of job of how job was afflicted job was attacked by the enemy well the, well, the lord allowed it right for a reason and it says um the lord restored the fortunes of job when he prayed for his friends and the lord gave job twice as much as he had before i'm telling you when, when the lord is doing restoration the lord is doing restoration okay father god is in the business of restoration like he doesn't just come and restore you a little bit no he's coming to restore you full force heavily right that's how he does because he wants you to understand that listen i am your god I am your God and there's no one else like he wants you to come to know know his power and his capabilities what he can do what he's able to do beyond what anybody can think as Ephesians 3 20 says God wants to surpass your imagination exceed your imagination and come in and I don't want to use this word but come in and shock you amen and uh, amaze you and stun you hallelujah praise the Lord it says Job was restored much more twice. He says twice as much. Amen. Twice as much. He received double. Hallelujah. And God's words speak as well about giving you double for every trouble you've been in, for, for every shame, for every pain, for everything, child of God. He's seen your tears. But the tears that you are about to cry now are going to be tears of laughter and tears of celebration and tears of joy. Because the tears of pain and sorrow and separation and a loss and everything that you've been through, you've cried those tears and, and that season is gone and done with. And God is bringing you into a brand new season of restoration where the only tears you're going to be crying is tears of celebration. And that's somebody's word in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So if you keep reading all the way down, you see that um, God uh, restored Job, gave him even more children, gave him even more, you know, uh, livestock, animals, and, and, and you know, all of that. And Job, Job's life, Job's years was restored. Hallelujah. God added unto Job. Amen. 
Cause I went on to Job, and 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 Job ended up living 140 years in total before he left. And Scripture says he lived full days. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it says he lived full days. Hallelujah. Our last scripture says in Amos 9, 11 to 15, which we all know, but this is very, very important, you all. Very, very important, you all. But also on that judgment day, I will restore David's house that has fallen to pieces. I will restore David's house that has fallen to pieces. I will repair the holes in the roof. Praise God. Replace the broken windows. Fix it up like new. When God restores your marriage, everything looks brand new. Like you just got into a brand new, yes, a brand new relationship, a brand new marriage with somebody brand new. When God finally restores your marriage completely, amen, it's, it, it's all going to feel like something new. Just, you know, like everything's feeling, yay, I'm, I'm in love again, right? It feels new. Though it's restoration, it feels new feels new praise God amen so let me just keep reading um yeah so it says uh fix it up like new David's people will be strong again and seize what's left of enemy in them plus everyone else under my sovereign judgment God's decree he will do this and then it says yes indeed it won't be long now it won't be long now God's decree things are going to happen fast so fast your head will swim one thing fast on the heels of the order you won't be able to keep up everything will be happening at once and everywhere you look blessings blessings like why I'm powering off the mountain and the hills I'll make everything right again for my people Israel I'm gonna keep reading he says they will rebuild their ruined cities they will plant vineyards and drink good wine they'll walk their gardens and eat fresh vegetables they'll plant them plant them on their own land hallelujah they will never again be uprooted from the land I've given them. God, your God, say so. Amen. Praise the Lord. How amazing. How awesome. Hallelujah. When when the Lord was uh, be was uh, beginning to restore my marriage in the very beginning um, of um, I think it was middle of 2020. Um, everything just kind of was just going really really quick and, I, and, and and truly and really i was trying to keep up that okay lord what are you doing okay what okay okay is this really happening am i really you know so everything was just was just like just just going and going and going and going and going and um eventually i reconnected with my uh, kingdom spouse and to the glory of god got married and everything else as they say is history but yeah so i want to just pray for somebody the lord has said that there's going to be many many married restorations this year and not just marriage restorations there are going to be kingdom marriages brand new kingdom marriages that will be taking place towards the end of this year and the lord <coughs> excuse me and the lord mentioned um an important key that that is needed to open this door the Lord gave me one key, but there's one more key I want to add to this. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to add one more key. So Father God gave me the key of obedience, right? So when he was speaking to me, um, and he mentioned restoration, I'm going to be restoring so many marriages this year, Glenn. I heard that and um and, and then I heard from the Lord that obedience is is needed. Obedience is needed. When Father God begins to restore your marriage, he needs you to be um, obedient to his word he wants you to take every instruction that he gives to you very very important I'm uh, sorry very very seriously because they are important right and if you don't obey the Lord and, and you don't do what he says for you to do that causes delay and sometimes if you continue to disobey the Lord it doesn't allow the Lord to work in your favor and the Lord told me something this year he said this year is the year no, he, he said to me, you've come into the year of the Lord's favor. I heard that it was so clear, just, just about a month ago. You've come into the year of the Lord's favor. And the way God wants to restore many of, it, of your marriages um, is simply just bringing about favor into your lives as well. right? God, God, God wants to start by favoring you and restoring your marriage. But he needs your obedience so that you can be able to come into receiving what he has for you with regards to your marriage restoration 
Hallelujah. If you don't obey the Lord, you cannot come to see the Lord's favor in your marriage restoration. So I want to just encourage you all because obedience is key. Obedience is of necessity. Obedience is so important. I had to obey the Lord on every instruction. If God gives you an instruction about pray for your spouse, pray for him. Amen. I don't... Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. I've done quite a bit of a counseling on um, uh, marriage restoration uh, with uh, some people that, you know, the, the Lord gave them strict instructions telling them what to do and they made me understand that I don't know what, the, like, I'm not sure if, you know, I'm going to, you know, be restored to my marriage, but I think it's because I disobeyed the Lord, of course, right? So just make sure that you ask the Holy Spirit for grace and I'm going to be praying for many of you right now to receive grace to obey and sometimes you can feel like, okay, what whatever the Lord tells me to do, I, I, I am willing to do, but you must have an open heart because not everything that the Lord tells you to, to, to do may be something that, you know, you think that you can do. So you may need the grace of God to come in and cover you in that area. Amen. If I don't go to say to you, be quiet and don't tell anybody about what I'm doing, be quiet. If it says fast for three days and pray for your kingdom spouse, pray for them. Amen. Fast and pray for them. Hallelujah. If it says don't call and don't text them, don't do that. Amen. So I definitely had strict instructions that, that I had to follow as well. God was speaking in uh, Proverbs about, you know, um, instruction and how he needs us to obey instructions because obeying instructions can save our lives. It speaks of it in the book of Proverbs. Hallelujah. So I pray for you, child of God. And then the second key as well is faith. So if you don't believe that Father God is able to do it, then it's not possible because faith makes everything possible, right? And there is nothing that is impossible with God. And he that comes to God must believe that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him by faith. By faith, you can't please the Lord in any other way. Your faith is what pleases the Lord. Abraham's faith pleased the Lord and then the Lord brought about the, the uh, magnitude of blessings that he did upon Abraham. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I pray for you, child of God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For all those who are believing for marriage restoration, whatever your situation is right now, whether it's separation at the middle of the road, you are divorced, you whatever it is, okay? Even if it, it's uh, something to do with somebody else, like, a, like another woman, you know, in, in the situation, or there's children involved, or, or, you know, something. I pray for you that Father God would just bring about wisdom, a holy wisdom, that would help your family right now. That would help you, help, 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 help you right now to be able to uh, set the right path for yourselves. That that would just help you to be able to know the way that you're supposed to go and how you're meant to do things in this hour. And I pray for grace upon your lives too. That Father God will give you grace even right now to obey His word, to obey Him, to do as He says. That you will come to see the blessing in the end, the blessing of marriage restoration. I pray that Father God will bring about new wine and fresh oil into your marriage in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray that Father God will rebuild everything that is ruined and broken in your marriage and make everything brand new again in Jesus' mighty name. And by reason of the mantle that Father God has placed upon my life to release the word of restoration, I pray for you, child of God, that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that promise of restoration that is upon your lives, the Lord shall perform it in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord shall perform it hastily in Jesus' mighty name. Father God makes all things beautiful in his time. So allow him to work on your marriage. Allow him to work on your heart. Allow him to work on your spouse. Don't be in a hurry. But be patient with the Lord because what he's doing is that he's perfecting every single bit of you and your spouse so that when he brings both of you together your union can be perfected your union can be rich your union can be better it can lose them and your union can impact many more lives that is for his glory in jesus mighty name and i want to pray for those who are trusting god <coughs> excuse me <coughs> for kingdom marriages for new godly marriages for godly uh, relationships i pray for you child of god that father god will connect you divinely by his hand connect you divinely to the one that he has for you to the one that he calls your purpose mates amen i pray that father god will give you the wisdom in this time in this hour as you wait for a spouse 
as you wait for a purpose made to be to, to be very very descending i pray for grace for discernment in your life even right now that you will not give in to the counterfeit but that you will wait upon the lord that he will give you the wisdom and the light by his word to knowing whom it is that he has for you i pray that you also receive the spirit of patience as well to be patient with the lord as he works on you because god doesn't want to join half and half together half and half together to become one no it's one whole person and one whole person to become one hallelujah praise god amen now i just pray that this word has been a blessing unto who needs it in this hour may father god bless every listener and i pray that god will give you all the grace to continue to obey him and live for him in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth if you are new you are welcome please subscribe and don't forget to share this video like the video and i will see you all in the next one and always remember god loves you jesus loves you so much and never ever ever give up you all everything is possible with father god almighty i am minister glenn and i always release the word of god the word of hope the word of healing and restoration here every other day on the ministry and then we go live on uh saturdays for our holy anointing service and then we have a sunday word on sundays god bless you all and i'll see you very very